is it possible to accelerate this journey to financial independence? Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's the Coco Nomad. And on this channel, I talk about financial and location independence when I share, and I share tips, tools, techniques that help you create a living and a life. So if you're interested, please click subscribe and the notification bell. Go ahead and click the like button right now too, because I think today's topic is gonna to be very, very interesting and appropriate for a lot of people. And that is, I'm talking about my own journey to FIRE. This is the Financial Independence Retire Early Movement. It's got a lot of traction. There's tons of people out here making videos about it. There's lots of articles out here if you want to do a deep dive. Um, I'm a late bloomer. I'm getting off to a late start and really almost starting from zero from a strictly from a dollar sense, not from a experience and, and toolkit and all these kinds of things. So I do recognize that. Um, so I wanted to see if there is a way that being at this late stage of my life or later stage, since I'm not 25, I'm not even 35. I'm not even 45. Um, and so for me to be able to achieve these goals and achieve financial independence, can I fast track this? In other words, can I put some accelerant onto this fire, as it were, and see if I can get there sooner? Um, I'm starting with a smaller portfolio, and I'm just looking to see what I can use to my advantage. In a previous video, I talked about focusing on what you can do and what you and not what you can't do. And I talk about looking for your own strengths and focusing on those and using those to your advantage. I mentioned that as a basketball player when I used in my early life, uh, when I was a gym rat, um, I'm not a tall person, I'm average height. And I play basketball with lots of taller and or more talented people, better shooters, better long range shooters. And I had to use my own talents to compete. So what I had in my advantage was quickness and I could jump really high. So, and I just used that. That was what I had to work with. And so that's what I did to be as successful as I could be. And so I'm taking that same principle and applying it right now to my life in this financial journey in terms of um, achieving financial independence. And one thing I do want to say, start, I'm not suggesting to anyone who's interested in financial independence, who's specifically interested in FIRE, and I've talked about in my mini retirements video why I'm not really caring about the RE part, the retire early parts, because I've done retirement so many times, I've done so many mini retirements, that it's just not something I'm interested in doing, I don't need that, but the financial independence, it's not a sprint, right, it's a marathon, I get that, I do, I do adhere to that adage that it's a marathon, not a sprint. But can it be a half marathon? And I shared in an earlier video why, why I like half marathons, uh, or at least why I stopped at half marathons during my marathon training. Marathons are a long time. And I don't really like, I get bored. I don't want to run for 20, how many ever miles? 26 miles, I think. Uh, see, I don't even care how long it is because I'm not going to be out there that long. Uh, focus on the 13 and keep it moving. So let's talk about these advantages that I'm using to help me accelerate. Uh, and the first one is actually trying to turn a negative into a positive. And I may have mentioned this before, but a couple of years ago, I sold my house um, that I owned for 15 years at a loss, which is incredible considering where the housing market is. But my situation and the house location and the, and the condition of the house, I was still in the midst of doing repairs. Um, and it was something where uh, I needed cash. So I needed to get out of the house at the time. So I sold it at a loss. I was already operating as a rental. I'd converted it into a rental a couple of years prior because I had been traveling and there was no sense in me keeping it as a primary residence anymore. So for a couple of years prior, I'd had a tenant, but at the end of the day, it was still operating at a loss. My cost for keeping this house, which is very, very old, it was a historic home, still needed tons of work. I was plunging lots of money into it piece by piece, but the house was 100 and probably 40, 150 years old, maybe older, and um, it just needed constant work. And so it was a money pit, essentially. It was like I was running at a loss on a monthly basis. So it challenged a lot of those notions for me about net worth and how you calculate your net worth and the paper value of the house and what you can actually get to it when you go to market. So it's really influenced the approach that I'm taking now and how I'm moving forward. But I turn that negative into a positive. And that is this first thing. And that is I have greatly reduced my carrying costs. I don't have cars anymore. I sold them all. I don't have a home anymore, which means I don't have the insurance the mortgage, 
uh, any of these things that were required for me to maintain them, maintenance, any of these things, gas, I am very, very flexible and free about how I live. So I can rent an apartment if I want to, I can stay in an Airbnb, I can use temporary housing, uh, things of that nature to reduce my cost. I use public transportation a lot. It's predominantly, I walk whenever I can. Uh, that is my predominant and preferred method of transportation because not only is it cost effective, there's some additional health benefits that I like about that. It helps me maintain and keep my weight down uh, because I do like to eat. And uh, But walking everywhere allows me to indulge that and not have to worry about being on some strict diet or some strict exercise regimen. So I'm turning that negative into a positive, low, low cost, or at least flexible cost that I can control. And when I want to, I can make that lower. The second thing that I'm doing in that area is something called geo arbitrage. And that is I've got this blue passport that allows me a visa free access or visa on arrival access to tons of countries around the world. And that is a huge privilege. And now I'm last five and a half, six years, I've been taking advantage of that. But the first year was just traveling and enjoying and things like that because I was just doing it as part of this gap year. And then it transformed into just my life. And so what I've been able to do is to live in and enjoy lots of different countries, many of which have lower cost of living than my home country of the United States. So uh, over the last few years, I've lived in Thailand, I've lived in Colombia, I've lived here in Mexico where I am now, Guatemala, Costa Rica, um, Portugal, Spain, Bali, lots of places, right? And they're, they're not all some of them are more expensive than others, especially in Europe. I spend time in Spain and Portugal. But even there, they're typically less expensive than what it costs for me to live in Atlanta, Georgia, for instance. Now, not necessarily all of them as lowest costing as when I lived in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Uh, but I do have the lower cost of living uh, for the most part abroad, and I do have flexibility. So I get to spend as much time in the lower cost countries as I can, offset that sometimes in higher cost countries or even in low cost countries and just decide to spend a little more money. Like for instance, this past year, I've spent more on rent in this past year than I have in the last five years by a lot. Like it's, it's, it's a significant increase, but there were reasons for doing that. Most, most recently in this apartment is I have two bedrooms so that I can actually have friends and family come and visit while I'm this close and try to help offset costs for them. So it was kind of like passing the geo arbitrage savings along. I'm able to save money, relatively speaking, for a two bedroom apartment in a great area of town so that someone's coming to visit me for a couple of days. They don't have to spend a few hundred dollars on a hotel and they can just minimize their costs to having the plane ticket. And then of course, you know, we can eat here in the house, I can cook or we can find, of course, Mexico City offers tons of places to eat for very affordable prices even going out and, and getting restaurants or on the street. So um, I'm passing that GR arbitrage along in a way of sharing. And then the other way I do that is of course, I leverage my vacations that way. I'm already posted in a country. So then I can go to uh, Cozumel and spend the weekend because I already live in Playa del Carmen. And I mean, I'm living in Playa del Carmen. So that's already a bit of <laughs> living in a vacation in a tourist spot. But the same thing when I lived in Medellin, it's like I can go to spend the weekend at a finca here in Mexico. I can go and spend time in some other places like Oaxaca. And it's cheaper for me to get to these places versus having that home base in the US and flying to all of these destinations. I set up a base, say for instance, in Antigua, Guatemala, and then I can do side trips from there. So I'm even using that geo arbitrage to leverage my vacation time as well. So I'm constantly keeping these costs low and taking advantage of that. The next way that I'm doing this and trying to accelerate this move is the big one. And that is multiple streams of income. Uh, for a long time, I really was just not interested in working a lot of hours. I spent most of my early career really focused on this work ethic that I was raising, which is like work a lot of hours, work, 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 work. And my grandfather used to always say, you know, you work all these years so that at the end you can retire and enjoy those retirement years. And I saw that that didn't necessarily happen. And they worked really, my grandparents worked really, really hard. And a lot of times they got to a place when they were older and they could retire, they weren't in the same physical health that they were when they were younger. All those years, they add up. You know, and so it's important to be able to do certain things that you can, which is why I'm a fan of many retirements, taking breaks, taking sabbaticals, being able to physically and mentally do the things that you can 
at that time, then go back to work and keep it going. Where I was missing the boat was the multiple streams of income. You want to have sources of income that are coming in that can sustain you while you're taking these breaks to give yourself the flexibility. And that's what I'm focused on now. I'll drop a link. I have these seven streams of income that I'm working on for 2022. And that's it's going to be sort of like what I'm working on building moving forward. And uh, you can watch that video and I go into detail. Um, and so what I did in that regard recently is I was previously only doing freelance work. I do freelance work for projects, make enough money, and then enjoy life. And now I'm doing freelance still. I still have freelance projects I'm working on, but I've gone back to full-time work. So I have full-time work. So I've added a full-time job. So I've got a full-time job. I've got the side gig with the uh, freelance work. Um, I'm podcasting. I have this YouTube channel. It's not monetized, but at some point, my hope is that it will be my writing, blogging, all these types of things. At some point, I love talking about these things. And I love putting time and effort into these uh, topics, but they should be paying, you know, there's nothing wrong with them, you know, generating income. And eventually, I'd like to be able to do this full time, or at least focus on this more in the in the midterm. So, you know, for a couple of years, I love the full time job. So I have no plans of leaving anytime soon. But maybe in three to five years, I'll change my mind. And then uh, finally, um, I will be updating my investment strategy. And I will talk about this in more detail. And there will be lots of videos coming because I'm doing a deep dive into that right now. And that is where I'm leveraging my existing investment portfolio, which is not that large. It's actually really small. I'm starting. And I think this is helpful for a lot of people because you may be starting small. Now, you may not have the same advantages. You may not be able to invest and put money in at the same rate. But I think the principles still apply. And I think they're still helpful. So there's something to think about. And then um, I want to get those dollars working harder for me. So once I earn the dollars and then put them somewhere, normally I would just have them sitting in a bank account. And then eventually, as I need the money, I would just withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. But those dollars weren't working. You know, even if it was just in a stock, as invested in a stock market or invested in some fund, that money wasn't working as hard as I was working. And so now I'm looking at ways to make that money work harder to go back and get Basically, go out and get some more friends and bring them back is how I look at it. So uh, these are the ways that I'm looking at accelerating this fire journey. So using it as an accelerant, I can put a little more gasoline on this fire, get it, get it going. So I hope this video helps. Maybe it gives you some ideas and some things to think about in ways that you can accelerate your financial independence journey, different techniques that you can use to sort of start to think about. Can you cut costs? Can you leverage your arbitrage? Can you earn money? And if you notice, I'm doing all of them. I'm not someone who's saying, oh, give up your Starbucks coffee or your avocado toast and just cut your expenses. There's a limit to what you can do there. I'm also not just saying like work yourself to the ground. You know, like find flexible ways to use your talents and experience to generate additional income and then put that money into places where it can continue to work for you. So that is what I want to leave you with today. Hope that it's been helpful and that you can use this. As always, click the like button, subscribe. I really, really appreciate the support. This is a very young channel. Please share this if you find this helpful for someone else or if you think they could benefit from it. I appreciate that very, very much. Hope you have an amazing day and I will talk to you next time. Cheers.